this week's episode, I stare at a sailboat, I learn to read, and I figure out how to use Google. Hey everybody, I'm Doug, and this is The Bottom Line. Welcome! We love you. Well, we meaning me. I don't have a co-host yet. On the way, we're going to figure that out, no problem. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, Marine Data Solutions and Salty Rat Crew Apparel. Marine Data Solutions, 99 problems on board. And the internet's not one of them! And Salty Rice Crew Apparel. Their uh, new office is at Lauderdale Marine Center, so you want to uh, check them out. They're in Fort Lauderdale. Before I jump into this episode, I want to talk about last episode. There's a lot of going back and forth on the uh, bottom line Facebook page about full-time versus freelance or part-time or day work. Both areas have their pluses and minuses, but I want everyone to remember that when you're freelancing or you're day working on a, on a, a charter boat, like a bear boat or something like that, uh, that's only for that day, or maybe it's a couple of days, or maybe it's a week. When the economy tanks or the weather's bad, uh, it's not like they're still going to pay you. Uh, they, they're actually paying you not to show up the next day. Uh, but much more importantly, you are giving up a lot of your rights uh, afforded to you by the Jones Act by not being a regular uh, full-time employee. Uh, I'll throw this out at you. Uh, you're on a bareboat charter, you're hired for the day, you break your neck or you break your ankle. Well, on a bareboat charter, you're working for the charter guest that's there for four hours. Uh, he ain't going to pay all your medical bills. And I don't think that the boat owner is going to pay all the medical bills because he's got a contract saying he never hired you. So you put yourself in a really big gray area if something happened to you. I strongly suggest that if you do do this, you better uh, make sure that you have your own insurance in place to take care of, uh, of you if something happens. Okay, yacht industry news. Uh, we're in Charleston. First of all, we're in Charleston and uh, we, uh, the tropical storm passed us. I was up last night and George was up before me. Uh, we saw 57 knots of wind. You can see that right there. It wasn't that bad. Biggest thing I thought was there was this boat, this sailboat right here. I was worried that it was going to get blown right into us and bang up to the side of the boat, but it didn't. We're, we're on the mega yacht, uh, mega yacht dock. Uh, everything was cool. So uh, it's off Cape Hatteras right now. For those of you up north, it was blown like 55, 57 was the high, constant 30s, maybe some 40s in there for me. Um, so it's not, it doesn't pack that much of a punch. We'll be getting underway shortly. So what I want to do first, well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about lawsuits and captains and how sometimes you can just be minding your own business and bam, you're in a lawsuit. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, we had a guest on board and he loves the show and he brought me this captain's wafers. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Paul. I'll eat those later. So, um, what we're gonna do before we get into the lawsuit thing is I wanna show you guys something really cool. All right, so here uh, you can see this is Google. I already have it tagged, but if you go to the Port State Information Exchange for the United States Coast Guard, and you can type in the name of a boat, it'll give you the information. Okay, so I know Renaissance, obviously, and I know the build year, that'll knock down the search criteria a little. And there's Renaissance, and we're active, and it says recreational, but we just recently converted to uh, commercial that'll change on my renewal in a couple of months so you click on that and it gives you some more information here's renaissance there's our official number our length our itc tonnage 253 and underneath uh, if there were anything against the boat the coast guard would list it accidents uh stuff like that so we're pretty clean there now if you want to search out another boat uh let's type in westport because every westport built unless it's for an owner immediately they call them westport so we type in westport and we'll do a quick search on that. And uh, you're gonna, let's see. Okay, so there's quite a bit of Westports there. Let's go to, uh, you can see on the left, uh, Westport, Westport, Westport. Let's go to page two. Uh, let's click on Westport 130. So uh, the Westport 130, it says it's 116, but that's because of the US measurement system. So what you have now is you have the manufacturer's call number. It's, it's flag Marshall Islands. That's built in 2004, and if you look on the bottom, this was once U.S. flag, so it has 180 ton domestic gross tonnage. And then it also lists uh, a 309 uh, ITC tonnage. So it's very easy to figure out uh, the tonnage of a boat. And uh, of course this is active, and of course this particular Westport does not have any marks against it either. It's an active boat. What can you use this for? If you want to know what the tonnage is of a boat when you're applying to, to uh, get a job, uh, how it works is that had dual tonnage, just like your U.S. licenses have dual tonnage. Like if you have a 200 or 500 ITC, or if you have a 500 or 1600 ITC or GT. Uh, so uh, that's that's a neat little tool to figure out uh, what's going on. Also, if you don't get paid and you need to know the documentation number, okay, that's a good way of finding out. 
Um, so anyway, all right, let's get in it. Lawsuits and the captain. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of lawsuits flying around on a lot of things on the planet, and the U.S. has a history of suing everybody. But uh, I'm going to give you two examples, then I'm going to explain how you can protect yourself a little bit more. We all know about this one. This one is the 197-foot Montreal called Dreams. And uh, what happened is uh, they chartered the boat for $450,000, I think, in the, British Virgin, uh, in the Bahamas. And uh, they're in the middle of a $10 million lawsuit. The $10 million lawsuit, among other things, has listed uh, <laughs> odorous captain is listed on the lawsuit. They were held against their will was listed in the lawsuit. They, the, the seas were so rough that uh, they're panic driven about trying to get back on another boat and the $450,000 charter, they want $10 million because of all this. The captain, I believe, got fired, that was the word. Um, and, and these are kind of silly reasons to be getting $10 million. Now, the second lawsuit, okay, this one's already completed. All right, and this is uh, actually from a captain friend of mine. Okay, so here they are suing a 2001 90, 92 foot boat, and they brought this guy to court. They hired, they sued the owner, they sued the owner's management company, they sued the captain, they sued, sued the captain's company. If you read here, you can see the captain uh, implemented an unsafe operation operational procedure by prohibiting the crew from wearing shoes on board. Also, uh, item C that the anchor was not properly maintained on the boat. And if you look here on G. It says the captain ignored the fundamental maritime law that prevents independent contractors from working as employees and seamen. Now, this one got settled. They wanted a million dollars. You can see here, they actually were directing the U.S. Marshal to seize the vessel in the middle of the season. So it makes no difference if you're, if you're private, pleasure, bareboat charter, UPV, U.S. or foreign commercial, makes no difference. Uh, They'll come after you. Now, back to this. What happened here? The deckhand, or the mate, cut himself, cut his foot on the tender they were renting in the British Virgin Islands. So they said he cut his foot based on the fact that the anchor was not working and it could be calmer. And because he wasn't allowed to wear shoes, if he wore shoes, he wouldn't have cut his foot. And then he went on to say, I did not receive proper medical care. Uh, there was a big dispute because he was a 1099 employee and the Jones Act does not kind of cover 1099 employees, but the lawyers said, we don't care if you're 1099 or not. You were, you know, they, they proved that this was a full-time sailor. Uh, it would create a whole bunch more. Um, they did not get the million dollars. They got a very small fee. Uh, and he got all his medical expenses taken care of. And everybody just washed their hands of it and went on their way. But the bottom line is, the captain thought he was going to lose his house. The captain thought he was going to be broke. The captain thought he was going to get massive, massive bills, but he was employed by the, the ca uh, owner and the owner took care of it. But he was listed in the lawsuit. You could have very easily had to start writing checks. Uh, so what can you do? Both of these situations, by the way, you would think, oh, I, I always thought, oh, maritime, maritime lawyer. I always picture this mahogany uh, uh, courtroom with Coast Guard guys running around testifying and other captains with stripes on their shoulders, you know, shaking books like this. Maritime law states that you can only do this. It's not that it's not that way, guys. You know what it is? It's some guy with a law office on the corner of the street looking uh, at the yacht going, hey, it's going to be a big payday. It's not, you, it's, they're not maritime lawyers. The one boat was in the Bahamas and it's registered foreign. They got the venue change to Fort Lauderdale. This other, the second boat was in the British Virgin Islands. But again, they've moved the venue to Fort Lauderdale. These, these lawyers, I'll tell you. So it doesn't matter what nationality, what classification of boat, they can come after you. Now, as a captain, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, first of all, I've talked about this before, uh, but don't hire 1099 employees full time. All right, that was a big deal on the second lawsuit. Besides being illegal, if you have a full time employee, it can't be 1099. You can hire a 1099 uh, crew member. Uh, I'll, I'll bring a boat from here to there. I need help. Uh, I want you to come on and do some day work. I want you to work on the boat for a week. But here's where the problem starts. Okay, according to the IRS, uh, if the employee has on-the-job training, if the hours and guidelines for work are set, if there's a guaranteed wage or salary that it does not have an end date, and if he receives benefits such as paid time off, insurance, pension, or whatever. He's an employee. He's not a 1099 guy, all right? Uh, paid time off, 
hey, come work for the boat. We're going to pay you this much a month, and uh, you get 30 days paid vacation every year. Not a 1099 employee. Not That's not the way it works. They got in a lot of trouble for that. Uh, why? Uh, the First of all, is because it was a medical issue. And as crew, working as 1099 employees, or they start these little companies, uh, uh, they're not afforded the same benefits as Jones Act provides for seamen, okay? But so what happens is when something happens, all of a sudden the crew member's like, well, I wasn't a, I wasn't a subcontractor. I wasn't, I wasn't run my company. I'm a, I'm a sailor. I work on this boat. That created a lot of problems for the, uh, for the boat owner and for the captain. So try and refrain from hiring 1099 employees or employees that have companies. Oh, uh, Leisure Cruise Sailing LLC, I'll be your mate. Um, it, it's just, it, there's no benefit. The additional money that you have to pay in payroll taxes is, is nominal compared to what can happen in a lawsuit. The second thing you need to do is you need to outline to the crew exactly how you want the boat to be run. You can't be up on the bridge and uh, have a second stew down below being derogatory, uh, making derogatory comments to a charter guest. You have nothing to do with that, all right? But then you're the one who's going to get named in the lawsuit when they come back and go, our trip was ruined because this person insulted me. I mean, we're talking big bucks and it's happening, all right? Lawsuits are flying dime a dozen these days. Everybody's going nuts. So you have to outline exactly how you want it. And I'm going to tell you something else to the crew. I'm the first one to say, hey, guys, we're not running the Queen Mary. But when it comes to this stuff, it's our way or the highway. Don't come on a boat saying, oh, I've been doing this before and I'm going to run my department the way I want to run my department. You can't do that. You have to run your department the way the captain wants it because his neck's on the line, not yours. You do something wrong to a charter guest, you're not going to get named in a lawsuit. He is. I can't stand it. When every once in a while I get very experienced crew and I like hiring experienced crew, but they're like, I, I, I give them what we're going to our program. This is how we do it. And they're like, well, I didn't do it this way on my last boat. And a lot of crew bring these pre conceived notions of how boats are supposed to run based on their last boat. That's all well and good, but I'm not going to run my boat based on how your captain ran his boat when you were with him. I don't know the program. I don't know what he was doing. I, I, I'm running the program the way I want to run it because my neck's on the line. Uh, we are talking serious money here. There's a lot more responsibility. I don't care if you're on a 40-footer or a 400-footer. All right, And that goes on bare boat date charters too. All right, You work for the charter uh, guest. So the odds of him not, uh, not um, uh, the odds of the guy that you technically legally work for is suing you is low. But if something happens on that boat and that day worker that you hired on that day boat charter sues, they're gonna sue you. They're not gonna sue the charter guest. Well, they might, but they're not gonna get a nickel out of the charter guest. The guy was there for four hours. It cost him a couple of thousand dollars. I don't think he's gonna fork over a million bucks. Then the owner of the boat's gonna say, hey, I never hired anybody. This was a bare boat. It, it's very, it's very complicated. It's very complicated and it's very much a gray area. By the way, if you as a captain hire crew and go, I'm gonna be smart about this. The owner's gonna give me X amount of dollars per month and I'm gonna hire crew and I'm gonna run through my company and make it look like I have employees. You've just opened yourself up to a huge can of worms. They're gonna be suing you and they're gonna stop there. They're not even gonna to go to the owner and you could lose a ton of money. So try and stay away from that. Uh, other than that, I put out, I have manuals this thick on board and I implore the crew to follow them. If they don't follow them, okay, I have a leg to stand on. Well, it's written, it's here, they didn't do it. But if you don't have anything written out, if you don't have guidelines set, they're gonna assume that you just let the crew run wild. And that's not good. I don't even let crew drink on board because God forbid somebody starts drinking on board and they go from the fly bridge and they fall down the stairs and break their neck or, or, or ankle or something. Okay, the first thing they're going to say in a lawsuit is, well, the captain's uh, policy is the crew can drink. And then they're going to turn around and go, so the crew can drink, but they're on the boat to maintain the boat and for the safety of the boat. It's, it's, you've got to get away from this. There's so many lawsuits flying around these days. Captains need to insulate themselves. Uh, you can do. You should do anything you possibly can to make sure that everything is above board. So next week, I, you know, I'll talk about crew uh, and what they do when they walk on board, uh, claiming that they're a company. Uh, you lose a ton of rights.
as far as a medical or something happened to you, when you run in yourself as a corporation, when you start calling yourself, your, your, your boss or your owner, clients or customers, that even pushes you more into, hey, I'm a real company type situation. And the first thing they're gonna ask you in a lawsuit is, well, where's your company insurance? Why are you going after this guy? So we'll talk about that another time. Hopefully next week, uh, I'll be in Newport. So you'll see me up there. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe. Everybody up in New England, brace, brace, brace. Uh, I think you've already braced. Uh, I hope you got through it all right. And uh, we'll see you next time. I love you. My name's Doug, and that's the bottom line.